And so I just have a uh, code pen right here that is just a very basic setup for using the JSPy SDK. So I'm just going to run through what I have already here. So I have, um, I'm just going to bump up the size a bit, yeah. So I have uh, a couple of divs that have IDs. Down here I have references to those divs uh, using uh, JavaScript, uh, jQuery. And I have this initialization script I'm going to talk about in a second. So if I just go into my panel here, it says it shows me that I'm including Shopify by, which is the JSPy SDK. And also I'm including jQuery, which is not at all necessary. It's just going to make it easier for the purpose of doing the live coding. It's just going to let me type a little bit less and make it a little bit easier to follow along. But you don't need jQuery to use a JSPy SDK. So um, the first thing that we do here is we initialize the client. So the client is the main object that you're going to use to retrieve data, create cart, and basically interact with the API. So we have this build client method, and it takes um, a configuration object. So we have these three keys that we need to provide, uh, API key, domain, and app ID. So I'm going to show you how to find these in your Shopify admin. So this is sort of our uh, dummy store here. So have the buy button channel installed, which is necessary to use the JSPy SDK. Buy button channel is free. You just install it from the App Store, I believe. So when I go to the buy button home screen, there's this uh, JavaScript buy SDK card here. I'm going to create token. And so down here, I have access to all the tokens that I've created, or I can create new ones. Um, I'm just going to use an existing token because I've created a bunch. So the inf important information here is the app ID, which is six, and the access token. Uh, we don't need the title. That's just for your own reference. So I'm going to, so, well, actually, I've already copied over um, that API key, which is the token. The app ID is six, and the domain is your full myshopify.com domain, including the myshopify.com part. So uh, this is sort of my basic setup here. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a cart. So just creating a cart object in memory. So client create cart. And create cart is an asynchronous method like a lot of the methods for the JSPy SDK. Uh, because though right now uh, it's just being stored in local storage, in the future we may have your cart stored on a server. So that would be an asynchronous request. So I'm going to add a dot then method, which is uh, how we, how we um, chain a method onto the end of a promise. So once the create cart has resolved, then we're going to run this function. Cart is what we get back from our create cart method. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the current subtotal into a div. So I have this div called total, say total, say dot text, cart dot subtotal. So my total is currently zero dollars because there's nothing in my cart. So nothing too exciting so far, but now we're going to uh, get a product and display that on the screen. So I'm going to say client dot fetch product, and then I need to pass a product ID. So to get a product ID, I'm going to go into my admin, products, and let's say this is the product that I want. And I'm just going to grab this last section of the URL. That's the ID right here. So paste that in. And again, this is an asynchronous request, so I need to use dot then. And what I get back from this is the product object. I'm just going to console log that to show what we're getting back.
There we go. So in my console here, I have this product object. So you can see I've got uh, title, uh, images, options, selected variant, all these various attributes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a button that um, when you click on it, adds the product to the cart, and it's just going to have the name of the product on the button. So I'm going to create a button element, and the text of the button is going to be the title of the product. And then I'm going to append this to the DOM in my uh, product div that I've got up here. So there's my button, it's got the title of the product in there. So um, what I want to do now is add an event handler to that button so that when I click on it, I can add it to the cart. So button.click, which is just a jQuery shorthand for adding an on-click event handler. And so we have this method in uh, the JSBI SDK. Um, I'm just going to show you the docs for a second here. So my cart model. So this is the method that we're going to be using here, create line items from variants. So we'll see that it takes this object as its argument, and that object has two keys, the variant and the quantity. So I'm going to say cart dot, oops, just copy and paste that because that's a long method name. And so my variant, I'm just going to pick the uh, default selected variant because there's by default uh, just the first variant is selected. So I'm going to say product dot selected variant and the quantity is going to be one. So I'm not going to see anything happen there because uh, it's an asynchronous request and we haven't done anything to update the DOM either. So I'm going to say dot then. And this gives me a reference to the updated cart. But the original cart has also been mutated, so it doesn't actually matter there. So now I can say, um, let's update that total. So total dot, dot text, just like we did before. So now every time I click the button, it's adding um, another uh, item to the cart. So my total is going up. So it would be kind of nice if our cart actually said what was in it rather than just um, saying how much it all costs. So I'm going to actually also add a, an item for a line item for every item in the cart so that we can see the contents of our cart. So my cart has a line items array. Just show you the cart object. So we have this line items array, and in it we have line items, which are the same as your products, pretty much. We've got you know, price, properties, etc. Yeah. So I'm going to loop through that array. Say for um, cart dot line items dot for each. Before I go appending things to my cart, I'm going to empty it out just so that I'm not uh, recreating them each time through the loop. So, or each time I click the button, so I'm going to say uh, cart dot empty. Then I'm going to say cart dot append. Uh, let's make it a paragraph. And just put the title of the item. So you see it doesn't change each time I add a new one because it's the same product. We're just updating the quantity. So I'm just going to change the text here so that we're also showing the quantity. And that's going to be item.quantity. So now as the quantity goes up, the price goes up as well. I shouldn't have added a space there. Uh, so now we've got our product, our cart being created, our product being fetched, and our product adding to the cart. So the last thing we want to do is just get this checkout button to work. 
So I'm going to just add an event handler to my checkout button. And just window.open. And the URL, uh, so the cart has a property called checkout URL that is going to always be updated to uh, purchase the items that we've chosen. So check out, oops, why didn't that work? Can I not spell that right? Oh, looks like I've got this wrong. So I'm just going to take a look at the documentation here. I must have had that spell wrong. Sorry, Tessa, can I interrupt you for a second? We have a question. Sure. Um, so without making it update quantity, can we make it add first time and second time when we click to remove the product from cart? Sorry, can you read that? Yeah, no problem. Um, so this is from Mohammadi. I'm really sorry if I just butchered your name. Um, the question is, without making it update quantity, can we make it add um, the first time and second time when we click to remove the product from cart? I'm not entirely sure what you mean here. Um, if you'd like to um, specify your question more, we'll address it later. Thank you so much. Uh, you can keep going, Tessa. Okay. Um, so looks, oh, because I didn't put cart, so cart.checkout URL, obviously. Um, so that's a capital U. So now add things to the cart. Checkout will take me to Shopify checkout. This, of course, this variant uh, seems to be out of stock, which is my bad, but, uh, and we didn't, we don't have anything set up to deal with out of stock items, but uh, this is the checkout URL that you would go to for, from the online store as well. So that's a fairly uh, basic demo of the JSBI SDK. Uh, it's very simple, you know, bare bones uh, example, doesn't really do much, but um, just sort of shows you what's possible there. So um, afterwards, I will uh, send out this URL if you want to play around with this, but again, you might want to, it's, it's, it's not the greatest, most maintainable code. It's just quick for demo purposes. So I'm just going to head back Perfect. to Perfect. Um, sorry, we have two more questions. Uh, one's, they're both from Van Tucker. How do you add more than one item to a cart, like a custom quantity? So if you wanted to update the quantity right. from your cart? Um, so to do sort of other <laughs> operations on the cart, um, there's we have the documentation here um, for the cart model. So that tells you all the things that you can do with a cart. So um, what you'd want to remove a line item is the cart remove line item uh, method. So that takes um, uh, the ID of the line item that you want to um, remove, and you can just call that on the cart. And then if you wanted to update the quantity or uh, update a line item, we have an update line item method. And then if you wanted to add, so add uh, more than one to the cart at a time, then uh, in the create line items from variance method, uh, there is a quantity um, property that you can just set to whatever you want. Awesome. And the second question, I guess, um, you kind of addressed it with the documentations, but how do you remove an item from a cart? Uh, remove an item from a cart? Yeah, so that was, uh, in this example, uh, go through it just because it would, I'd have to wire up uh, the event handlers, which would take a while, but um, you would basically have an event handler for, say, a button here, and when you click it, it would call the cart dot uh, remove line item, and it would send the ID of that line item, which you could um, specify using the um, uh, maybe a data attribute or something on the on the cart item. Perfect. And we got clarification on our first question. So he asks, for example, when we click on a product, the GNIT, it will update a price and subtotal, and then when we click it the second time, it will remove it from cart. Is that kind of functionality built into the JS by SDK? Um, so that's just something that you would have to customize through your own event handlers. So you would have to add some logic to the event handler for the line item saying that would keep track of how many times you clicked it. Uh, so the JS by SDK is 
just sort of giving you the methods to manage your cart. Um, what you, how you build an interface around that is really up to you. Perfect, and we'll answer this one last question before we move forward. Um, this is from Vitaly. So does the JavaScript by SDK uh, return product stock in JSON? So you will not get the actual inventory levels, if that's what you mean, um, because that's easily uh, scammable by bots. Um, but you will be able to tell whether or not an item it can be purchased. So that will tell it will um, be either available or unavailable. Um, and then if, uh, in terms of actual data format, um, the raw API request comes back in JSON, but the JS by SDK will have that parsed into a JavaScript object that has all sorts of convenient methods and getters and setters on it. Awesome, thank you.